Welcome back to the show here to talk about some more new things that we saw already in the NFL preseason week one. We already talked about the Guardian Caps. We talked about the rookie quarterbacks impressing already. Now another new thing that I did pick out had to do, of course, with the new kickoff rules. And this is very, um, very new territory for everybody. Talking about a complete shift and just change overall in the kickoff rules. There was already going to be confusion with the simpler rules that I think are simpler, you know, like the touchbacks and the landing zone and whatnot. We already saw, you know, some new things, some some good returns in the first week of the preseason, some bad returns. And also, while I was watching the Steelers game, I saw that the Texans kicker failed to reach the landing zone, which I thought was never going to happen. I never thought I was going to see a kicker fail to reach the zone, but that happened and the Steelers got the ball at the 40-yard line. So, We've already seen a lot of different things, aspects to do with this new kickoff rule, but one that I was not aware of, much like everybody else on the field, it seems like, happened in the Chiefs and Jacksonville Jaguars game because, to paint a picture for you guys here, the Jacksonville Jaguars heading into halftime, just about, they just had scored a touchdown and were about to kick it off to the Kansas City Chiefs and give the ball back to them, obviously after scoring a touchdown, and the Jacksonville kicker, you know, kicks it off. There's no problem with anything. He kicks it on the fly into the end zone. It hits the end zone first, and it just barely bounces back out of the end zone, and it stops rolling on about, like, the half-yard line, very clearly outside of the end zone. It's not like it was halfway in and halfway out. It was very clearly the whole ball was outside of the end zone, so it hit the end zone first bounced out and made it to the half yard line and it stopped right there for Miko Hardman to you know field the kick he went out of his well he didn't go out of his way but he waited for the ball to stop on the half yard line and Miko Hardman grabbed it walked back into the end zone and he downed it which he obviously thought it was going to be a touchback because that's what the old rule said you know if you bring it back into the end zone you kneel it it was going to be a touchback but again like I said those were the old rules, but now in the new rules, that ball is actually supposed to be live. It hit the end zone, and then it bounced out. Miko Hardman was supposed to pick it up and return it because it didn't stop in the end zone. It stopped quite clearly outside of the end zone, but instead, he brought it back in. He downed it, and everybody on the field thought it was going to be a touchback. Nobody actually knew the rules, it seemed like, but Doug Peterson was the only one to kind of point it out. He pointed it out to the officials after the fact, after they went into a timeout, that it was clearly outside of the end zone. And the refs, you know, during the timeout looked at it, discussed with one another, and they came to the realization that Doug Peterson was right, that it was actually supposed to be a safety because it's like fielding the ball on the 10-yard line and then running back into the end zone and get, getting tackled there. That's pretty much what Miko Hardman did, but it was so close and based off of the old rules, he could do that without getting actually tackled and touched to be downed. So in these new rules, that was actually a safety. After the timeout, they went over it, looked at it, and they gave the ball back to the Jacksonville Jaguars. They had to because it was a safety, and they reviewed it and did everything like that. And, you know, everybody was just left very confused. Even the refs, the Kansas City Chiefs also didn't look like they knew what was going on or what the rule actually was. But Doug Peterson was the one that pointed it out. You know, he went over there, argued with the refs a little bit, told them to look at it, and based on the rules, he was exactly right. And, you know, that was that. That was one situation where I'm glad it happened in the preseason. I'm sure everybody is happy that it did happen in the preseason because it was a very awkward moment where nobody really, it was like nothing even happened. Nothing even happened. The only one that reacted to it was Doug Peterson they listened to him, and they actually got it right. He was actually right after the fact, and credit to him for knowing the rules. You know, after this, I saw some backlash uh, as to the new kickoff rules maybe being too confusing or just um, just calling out the new rules for, I guess, being too, um, just too different, I guess is, is the word to say. They're a little bit too different and have too many different nuances and just un- known things that you know confuse and make the game look a little bit sloppy already in the first week of preseason when it comes to these kickoff rules because nobody seems to know what they're supposed to do and what their rules actually are but um 
I actually love that this happened, you know, talking over this entire situation and where you fall in terms of thinking this is a good thing or a bad thing. Does this make the kickoff rule look even worse or does it make it look better in some way? I, I love that this happened and I think it makes the kickoff rule even more fascinating to me just because um, to me, it's on each team, every player to know the rules. If they're going to go through with this new protocol, this new format and whatnot, everybody's got to know the rules. And if you're well prepared and if you can find loopholes, can find new strategies and new um, just ways to take advantage of the rule and find new kicking techniques or whatnot to just kick it anywhere in the landing zone and have it roll in your favor, that's all fair game. And to not know a rule like this, clearly Doug Peterson did some more studying, did some more um, research on this new kickoff format than anybody on the Kansas City Chiefs sideline. To go as far as to say that Andy Reid really didn't know too well that that was a rule or he just wasn't really aware of it or it just like didn't cross his mind. I think that, you know, is a lot of credit should go to Doug Peterson for knowing the rules, pointing it out. And I love that he did that because it just shows how like quick and clever you are right away to point something out and know like, hey, this is going to benefit our team. They don't know the rules well enough. Let's let's take advantage of that. Tell the rest. And now we get the ball back right before halftime and we could increase the score a little bit more. And I can understand why it looks a little bit bad if um, this is a regular season game and teams don't know the rules and it does affect the game pretty drastically if one team is trying to score before the half, they get a safety called on them and they have to give the ball back and then they end up losing by a score or less than a touchdown. That would be a little bit you know, worse off if that actually happened in the regular season game because it would just show that nobody's really too prepared or that this new rule is just too confusing and whatnot. But this is the time to do it. Not only did I like that the Chiefs didn't know it and Doug Peterson took advantage of that and knowing that he knew the rules inside and out, but to happen right now during the preseason, this is still a trial run pretty much. Sean Payton alluded to the fact uh, last week that I talked about it where you know he brought up some changes that he would like to make, and he even said that, during the rest of the preseason or leading up into the regular season that he wouldn't be surprised if the NFL made some more tweaks or just changed this new format a little bit more. And this is the time to have these mistakes, to make it look a little bit uglier and to learn your lesson pretty much at the end of the day. Know that, all right, if it bounces out of the end zone, we can't just down it anymore. We have to return it. And in all seriousness, this could all be maybe a new strategy that kickers can imply if they could somehow do this it was pretty lucky for it to happen honestly but if kickers can find a way to kick it close to the end zone line or have it just touch the end zone on the fly and have it roll back in some way if they're even able to maneuver a kick like that or have any sort of control like that that's a great strategy because not only does it play more into your favor to having the receiving team return it but it disorients everybody because now you think it's going to just stay in the end zone but if it actually pops out Now everybody has to, you know, be caught right off guard, has to, you know, find their assignments, start blocking. And by that time, you know, the opposing team, the kicking team is paying attention to the ball and they're waiting for them to touch it. And if they don't touch it, then everyone's just waiting and nobody really knows what's going on. And then everything's thrown off really at the end of the day if the receiving team can't even field it because they're not aware of it. At that point, um, it does hinder it because the kicking team isn't allowed to move until the kicker does field the ball. So that's the only thing that kind of would ruin this strategy. But at the end of the day, I, I like I love that this happened because I I love that Doug Peterson was clever enough to know the rules and point it out. And the Chiefs are kind of left, you know, in a spot where they got caught a little bit red-handed, kind of got exposed to not knowing all the rules. So it was a little bit embarrassing, but it's the preseason game. Nobody's really paying attention to who wins or who loses. If that ended up costing them the game by a score or whatnot, I don't even remember. It's because it's the preseason. But this stood out just because it is a little different, you know, layer of this kickoff rule that nobody really knew of. I had no idea of it. But that, but now once it was a little bit more explained, then you can understand and see how this could be something that could happen in the regular season. And not only that, how it could impact a lot of how these kickoffs are 
are implemented. So overall, you know, weird situation. The only bad part about it is that the refs also didn't really know to point it out right away in the moment. You would think that the refs are the ones on top of everything, keeping everybody in check. But even they are obviously human. They are probably still learning the rules as they go in a new format, actually seeing it being played out. So, you know, refs are human. Refs make mistakes as well. They're also trying to get accustomed to it. But that's the only negative part I would take away from it is that if the referees don't get too knowledgeable of the rules by the regular season, then it becomes a problem because they're the ones that are supposed to be ushering everything and making sure that everything runs according to the rules. But once the refs know it and once everybody gets a better feel of it, this won't be too big of a problem. But overall, I thought it was great that this happened. I love that Doug Peterson knew to point it out. And it's just a little, you know, a little just thing that they have to iron out. I'm sure it won't be a problem going forward. But that's one thing with, again, the new kickoff rule that, you know, brought a new wrinkle to it that teams just have to pay attention to. So overall, I'm not too bothered by it. It's just a learning curve, a, le- uh, a lesson that these teams will take with them going into the regular season. But that was pretty much the most exciting thing I would say that happened from that game. I didn't catch too much of it except that. But we'll go into our next break. And when we return, some more updates on the Brandon Ayuk situation from the weekend and also from today, what I've been hearing in terms of the Steelers' major proposal to Brandon Ayuk and the 49ers. They reportedly made a strong offer to both of them and we'll have to just see how it plays out but it looks like the Steelers are making some progression in that aspect and we'll talk about that and Ayuk reportedly turning down a trade to the Cleveland Browns as well all of that coming up in just a few seconds don't go anywhere <laughs> 